Dear colleagues, we are back for the third part of this module dedicated to bladder cancer. Thank you, Johan. Uh, we are going to discuss the endpoint in clinical trials. There are a lot of new drugs in the pipeline, metastatic setting, muscle invasive, non-muscle invasive, and I think that our colleagues um, uh, would like to understand how to read between the lines of these trials and the methodology. So thank you. So the question is, is disease-free survival the, the right endpoint for muscle invasive bladder cancer? So, of course, uh, defining the more, the more appropriate endpoint is very critical because the endpoint need to, to match the purpose of the trial is very different between phase zero, phase one, or phase four, obviously. And the endpoint need to match the type of strategy investigated. In metastasis setting, we shouldn't use response overall survival, but if you assess a strategy on a new local therapy, this should impact the local uh, relapse-free survival functional effects or the completeness of, of the resection. So it's critical to define the more appropriate endpoint and a clinical trial endpoint aim to demonstrate clinical benefit, but also meet regulatory requirements. And of course, different endpoints are used across bladder cancer stage. Early phase trial evaluates safety, biological drug activity, but later phase studies often evaluate clinical benefit, meaning survival. We have some uh, guidance from both FDA and EMEA, and especially in, uh, in bladder cancer. So uh, we know that we have multiple factors that affect the choice of endpoint in a clinical trial. Uh, the clinical consequence of delaying or preventing disease progression is important when we use an, an, an endpoint. This is indication, of course, trial phases, of course, expected frequency of the events to have sufficient uh, statistical power, for example. So here's some uh, guidelines from a paper published in GCO three years ago and showing that in uh, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, time to recurrence or recurrence-free survival is the best endpoint as a primary endpoint in this disease. So maybe we can we can stay here to, to ask my colleague if they are uh, if they yeah, agree with Yeah, I think it's important that. because this paper is coming from, uh, I would say, a roundtable discussion between experts, and I'm not so sure that everyone agrees with uh, what is uh, proposed there. Uh, for instance, uh, Maria, what is your opinion? Um, my opinion in high-risk uh, uh, non-muscle invasive disease or BCG refractory non-muscle invasive disease is that uh, probably, for me, the best endpoint is uh, progression-free survival. Why? Because these are patients at risk of progress and probably complete response at three months. It's not a, a, an endpoint representative of progression after. So I would say, under my opinion, I would put first uh, time to progression in these uh, specific patients. Fred, would you like to add anything? Absolutely. You know, I've been involved in that study. I was the last author on that uh, publication. And one of the reasons why we chose recurrence is that if you wait for progression, especially in, in BCG naive patients, it will take years and years be a, before you have your endpoint. From a clinical point of view, I agree with Maria that, of course, progression is very important. But if you look at trials, and you know, you have to finish your trial within a, in a, in a reasonable time frame then recurrence is a very important endpoint. So that's why we chose for primary endpoint recurrence, secondary endpoint, obviously progression. So you are just saying that there is a discrepancy between the timeline, I would say, of evidence-based medicine and the reality of the practice when you want to incorporate the new drug as much, as soon as possible into the practice, you have to make choices. We should have to be pragmatic when we design a clinical trial, of course, yeah. Please, Johan, go ahead. Okay, in metastasis setting, uh, the aim of therapy is to prolong overall survival. So overall survival is the best endpoint, but we can use also in some uh, circumstances uh, progression-free survival. And why? Because uh, PFS can be evaluated earlier than overall survival, so it requires a smaller patient population. And PFS is not influenced by subsequent therapy, unlike overall survival. In muscle invasive bladder cancer, in perioperative studies, we have two different endpoints, disease-free survival and overall survival. Um, PCR is not a truly proven organ of uh, DFS or overall survival. And an improvement in DFS is widely considered as a clinical meaningful benefit so far. 
And we have three uh, different uh, phase three trial uh, investigating immunotherapy in adjuvant setting currently, and we are waiting for the data. And this is post-operative? Post absolutely, okay. post-operative. That's very important adjuvant. for our colleagues because there are many trials, so uh, just after So adjuvant immunotherapy. So MVGO 10, Ambassador and Checkmate study. And the primary endpoint in all three studies is uh, disease-free survival. So the question is, can DFS be used as surrogate endpoint for the survival? Uh, so DFS is accepted for um, uh, traditional and accelerate approval by both FDA and MEA. It has been supported in different uh, uh, tumor type, breast cancer, colorectal cancer, melanoma, kidney cancer. And DFS can serve as a good surrogate for overall survival when there is no curative salvage therapy for relapse disease, which is the case in, in bladder cancer. But there is some, uh, some issue with DFS. DFS definition may vary across trial. DFS may depend on the way to assess the response and the progression. And DFS is not a strong surrogate of our survival across uh, tumor time. So there is at least two conditions that are required to, to prove that DFS and our survival are correlated. So in breast cancer, we demonstrate that. But in kidney cancer, it's not the case. Sunitim received the approval based on an improvement in DFS, but actually there is no improvement in overall survival. So in MVGOR 10, for example, so the adjuvant immunotherapy with uh, atezolizumab, uh, DFS definition events include local recurrence of, of, of urocellular carcinoma, urinary tract recurrence, distant metastasis, so death from any cause, and not the same definition in other trials. There is a, a, a group from the NCI working on this uh, definition, so it is very important to emphasize. And in bladder cancer, we know that with the uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy, DFS, uh, there is a, a DFS benefit, 34% uh, relative decrease in the risk of disease recurrence, and also a 23% relative decrease in the risk of death. So there is a, a good correlation, but it's not a true uh, surrogate. So what are the benefits and the limitation of DFS and overall survival as primary endpoint in adjuvant trial? DFS requires short duration of follow-up, smaller patient number, it's uh, clinically relevant to the adjuvant setting. It's not affected by prosovet, but it cannot be statistically validated as a surrogate of, for of our survival in bladder cancer. Definition of DFS can vary among study, and there is a, a problem, the balanced timing of assessment among treatment arms. And overall survival is a gold standard, of course. Uh, directly, overall survival directly measure clinical benefit. It's an easy uh, measurable endpoint. It's not affected by bias. But it requires a long-term follow-up, requires a higher number of uh, patients, so higher uh, cost. It's influenced by crossover and subsequent therapy, and it's influenced by non-consent deaths. So, can can I have a small question? Do you think the uh, comparison between different uh, disease-specific survival of uh, and overall survival uh, can be different with regard to chemotherapy, immunotherapy? Because if patients respond to immunotherapy, they do very long, very well. Yeah, that, that, that's a good question. For the, for especially for the DFS, we we can have uh, the pattern of relapse could be different from the chemotherapy. So, I think um, the so far uh, the overall survival should be the best endpoint with overall survival, but I showed that actually in the three clinical trials we are waiting for, DFS is the primary endpoint. Yep, yep, that, 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 that's, that's an issue we can discuss when we, uh, we receive the, uh, the, uh, the data. So summary, uh, clinical trial endpoints are selected based on multiple factors. Different endpoints are used to measure benefit at different stages of disease. And while surrogacy is not strictly proven, DFS is considered so far clinically meaningful for patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer, and it is accepted as a surrogate for overall survival by FDA and MEA. So it's maybe the most important thing. DFS uh, requires a shorter duration of follow and a smaller patient number to demonstrate a statistically significant improvement compared with overall survival. So it's very important also for the pharma, of course. Thank you again. So, thank you, Johan. I think that DFS appears to be a shortcut, I would say. Uh, um, Maria, do you think that uh, any trial sticking only to DFS, actually, after what Johan stated, would be enough in bladder cancer? We will see. I think that we, we should think a little bit out of the box, and uh, probably uh, we can consider DFS as an endpoint for a clinical trial, with, but uh, just for accelerating the approval of 
a therapy and to have uh, something for treating patients when we don't have alternatives. But then we should be cautious and to recruit real world data afterwards just to know which is the real impact and to be sure that if we cannot confirm the outcomes from the trial then we are able to do a step back otherwise we are uh, putting on risk our patients so uh, i think that we should combine and probably uh, just for testing new therapies real world data it's going to be a key point thank you well, even in the first uh, one of the first immunotherapy trials the csv survival was better but overall survival was not so i think the future will learn i think it's important also to stick with criteria that could be translated into clinical practice because when you speak survival or overall survival it's something that speaks to everybody uh, dfs it's uh, much more uh, statistic trials and uh, that's important that uh, our colleagues uh, can understand also what uh, the outside the statistics what we try to promote uh, for the to the improvement of the risk of the patient. That's what over survivor to me is, is still the best endpoint. Yeah. Thank you uh, all of you for your involvement in this module of ESO Euro Online. We will uh, you will find the video uh, on uh, the Euro Onco platform of the EAU and uh, we'll see you soon for uh, another module.